So hair loss questions seem to be flooding my DMs lately. It's a lot of guys reaching out that are concerned that they're balding. And I figured that I would take some of the most common questions and concerns and make a video about it because a lot of the questions I'm being asked are actually myths. And I figured that making a video on my channel would be a really good way to debunk them. Let's get into it. Myth number one, taking creatine will make you go bald. This is such a common question that I get, so let's talk about it. So a 2009 study in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine is often referenced when this topic gets brought up. This is a study that followed 20 rugby players over the course of three weeks, and the players were split into two groups and they supplemented 25 grams of creatine or glucose per day for seven days, followed by two weeks of five grams of creatine or glucose per day. So three weeks total. Now this study measured serum, testosterone, and DHT levels before and after the three weeks. After the three weeks, serum testosterone didn't change much, but DHT increased by about 56% in the creatine supplementation group. Since DHT is known to be a contributing factor in hair loss, especially in men genetically predisposed to male pattern baldness, a lot of people have jumped to their own conclusions that creatine equals hair loss. Let's break the study down a little bit. The first and I think most obvious thing to point out is that this study did not measure hair loss at all. It only measured serum testosterone and DHT levels. Secondly, it was such a small cohort of subjects. There were only 20 players. It's also worth pointing out, none of those players experienced any hair loss. Another thing to point out, free testosterone was not measured. That's the active form of testosterone in your body that isn't bound to proteins. The body uses free testosterone to produce DHT. Since free testosterone wasn't measured, there's no way of knowing if the free T to DHT ratio was in a normal range. We do know that serum T to DHT was well within normal clinical limits. And this is especially important because the players were taking five times the recommended dose of creatine in the first seven days. Recommended dosage for creatine is typically five grams per day, and they were taking 25 grams per day for the first week. Moreover, subsequent research has not replicated these findings. So this suggests that the initial result from this 2009 study, which was a long time ago, might have been an anomaly. For instance, there's a 2021 paper published in the Journal of International Society of Sports and Nutrition, which found no significant correlation between long-term creatine use and hair loss. So I think it's safe to say that this is definitely a myth and you can supplement five grams of creatine per day and get the strength and brain benefits of creatine without being stressed that you're gonna go bald or that you're gonna lose your hair, at least from a creatine perspective. If you are concerned about hair loss, it's definitely advisable to focus on factors that have more substantial evidence base, such as genetics, hormonal changes, overall health and lifestyle. So definitely consult with a healthcare provider or professional. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I'm just trying to read and interpret studies as I see them. So let's move on to myth number two, which kind of took me by surprise, but it's guys asking me if blow dryers will cause hair loss. And this, I guess, for some reason is a common belief is that blow dryers and I guess heat will make your hair fall out. So I guess this belief is coming from the fact that blow dryers or excessive heat can damage your cuticle, but this somehow leads to your hair follicles also being damaged, which leads to them getting weaker and then eventually falling out. This is not true. <laughs> Research does indicate that excessive heat can cause damage to the shaft, or like the outer part, the cuticle on the outside, but it does not translate to the follicle or beneath the scalp and there's in no way does it cause permanent hair loss. So what should you do? Well, the best thing you can do is use a heat protectant when you use a blow dryer and when you are using a blow dryer, hold it six inches away from your hair and put it on the lowest heat setting. So I blow dry my hair multiple times a week. And when I do blow dry my hair, there's one blow dryer that I trust to protect my hair. And they have been a sponsor on this channel before, and they are a paid sponsor of today's video, which is the Lathan Swift. And they're continuing to be a sponsor of my channel because I trust them to keep my hair safe and damage free. So what I love about the Lathan is that one, it uses negative ion technology, which actually helps reduce frizz by up to 40%. 
percent. Second is it dries your hair really fast and efficiently. I can dry my hair in eight to nine minutes from soak and wet to dry. It has three temperature settings, hot, warm, and cool. And then the best part about this thing is it has an auto circulation mode, which is basically a built in heat protectant. So it circulates between hot, warm, and cool, basically on autopilot, which ensures that you're not blowing super hot air in one spot for very long. So definitely check out the link in my description to grab a Leif and Swift. They're offering a really steep discount right now. You can find both links to Amazon and the official Leif and site in the description. I promise if you pick one of these up, you won't be disappointed. You can definitely either enjoy it for yourself, but it also makes a really great high-end gift for someone without having to spend the high-end dollars that you would spend on some other brands of similar performance. Let's move on to the third myth that I hear all the time that I need to debunk, and that is wearing hats will make you lose your hair. Again, I'm not sure where this came from, but this is one I wanted to debunk, is that the belief that wearing hats regularly, even if they're tight, can lead to hair loss. So I think this theory is that it restricts blood flow to your scalp or it pulls your follicles too tightly, which can weaken them and cause them to fall out. I think people believe this because very tight hairstyles worn over long periods of time can lead to something called traction alopecia, which is basically the weakening of the follicle because it's being pulled so super tight. Basically, I think what's happening is that people are extrapolating that basically to hats. And I think it's a common misunderstanding. Multiple dermatological studies have shown that wearing hats do not cause hair loss. The American Academy of Dermatology points out that hats do not affect circulation enough in the scalp to have any effect whatsoever. It's very unlikely that it would lead to any sort of hair loss. I love hats. I wear hats all the time. Enjoy your hat. I think it makes a really great accessory, especially for long hair. It gives you a unique look that you don't see everyone rocking on a day day-to-day -day basis. I think it's a great way to stand out. That's all I got for you today. Those were some of the most common questions that I get hit up in the DMs about. If you like this type of video or if you want to drop a question that you may or may not know the answer to in the comments, let me know. And perhaps I'll make a, a part two to this video or I'll make it a series. I don't know where I just debunk a lot of commonly held beliefs. Don't forget, check out Leifen. They're a really good price right now. Go get a nice gift for you, yourself or a loved one. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.